Assalamu alaikum to some of you and peace to the rest of you. Black sign, I'm black in again. All right, let me get to the, um, get straight to the point. Saeed Raghia delivered a Friday khutbah at Germantown Masjid, and he said that most African Americans were the products of one night stands and didn't know their fathers. Um, now, he was extolling the benefits of polygyny when he said this. He and I are in agreement. But then he said that African Americans were largely the products of one night stands and don't know their fathers and were not in agreement about this because even though the majority of our births now are out of wedlock at this point, um, there's still more to it. It's deeper than just what he said. Now, if you're talking about societal ills in another culture, it is a very wise and diplomatic thing to say, well, they have explained to me. Or uh, to say, according to such a site, <laughs> and if this is true, if this website is telling the truth, or if these stats are true, then. But I heard the part where he made these statements and he didn't say these qualifiers. But then yesterday he apologized. And in his apology, so I had to pause this for a second. So he issued an apology. And um, I believe that he meant the apology, partially. And I was on uh, the 16th of November. I'm recording this on the 17th. Um, where many of you are in the audience at the time I'm recording this, it's still the 16th. But um, this guy issued an apology and while he may have really meant what he said, I want you in the audience to notice something. Saeed, I want you to pay attention to this too. And I'm saying this without hatred, but we still have to say it. When you say something wrong and you screw up and you say it publicly and people call you out, you can't get on them for calling you out. You're dealing with masses of people that don't have the Islamic knowledge you have, but they know that you said something to disparage a group of people that have already been disparaged, to which you're related. And, in, and to which you admitted to being somewhat related and who's struggling and suffering you admitted being aware of to a certain extent. So they've been traumatized. You've been traumatized. Your people have been traumatized and my people have been traumatized. And through this trauma, you understand how the masses are going to react because that's what they know. And you're saying, yeah, but look at the reaction. Um, sir, the reaction is going to be exactly as what you saw. You did apologize, sir. I want you to factor in two extra things. Number one, you did not insult white folks or you didn't disparage the community or say anything like that, even though 50% of white births are also out of wedlock at this point. If you're going to get on a group of people that have been victims, you have to get on their oppressor as well. If I talk about your people, I got to talk about the Brits and the Italians that colonized you, don't I? Wouldn't I? I can't sit up here and start pointing the fingers at Somalis for certain things and then let the Brits and the Italians off the hook. Unless, of course, enough people from the country tell me, well, this particular flaw is not their fault. They had nothing to do with it. That would be the exception. But without that, I can't do that. And I know certain things that go on between your people in your community. Maybe I'm not supposed to know, but I know about them. I don't say anything. I got my own audience. 700 plus subscribers at this point. It ain't much, but I, I don't say much about it. I don't get on you all's case and blast you. Because uh, not only are you a Muslim nationality with people in the community trying to get the community better and more reformed, but, but also, sir... You are an African group of Muslims. And then to top it off, let's be honest, the people that want to make the African-American community better and people from your community who want to make the Somali community better tend to get along with each other better than they do others of their own nationalities and ethnicities that don't want to do anything to make the communities better. So someone who wants to see um, 
unhelpful practices removed from Somali customs would get along better with me than, uh, than I would get along with another African-American who wants to stay ratchet or better than he or she would get along with another Somali who wants to keep the customs going at the expense of Islam. You'd get along better in that case because Toba, repentance, and, and um, this is something that unifies righteous people, especially righteous Muslims. And, and the serious commitment to reform at individual and societal levels without trying to compromise either one for the sake of the other. This is the proof of the matter. And, and don't get it twisted. I've already made a promise to somebody that it's about a year and a half now that's left. I already made a promise to somebody that in that time, I'm going to start digging into the community about the sordio. Yeah, I made a promise to somebody I was going to do it. <laughs> but I'm I'm going to wait until the time that I promised to wait, inshallah. But you can't get on the people who called you out about it. You said it, and you didn't get on white folks. Remember, sir, and you know this as a, as a scholar. I'm not a scholar. <laughs> you're the one. You're the scholar. But I'm sure you know this. You're not allowed to side with the oppressor against the oppressed. And if you don't mention the oppressor and you castigate the flaws of the oppressed then if you're not siding with the oppressed, you still allowed yourself to look like you are and you've given them a complaint against you. So you apologize. That's it. You say, I was wrong. I screwed up. This is what I was really talking about anyway. And by the way, when you go in on, uh, when you say something like this and I turn around and I dig in to the, the Bedouins, the Arab Bedouins, they're not the same because number one, uh, you and our, you, your people and my people got oppressed colonized and enslaved y'all were colonized we were colonized and enslaved after being kidnapped uh we're both being pressured to leave islam and go to other faiths this is something that's happening on both of our ends and this is being done by somebody from the outside when i dig into the arab bedouins i have every right to do it because number one allah himself did it in surah toba Verses 97 and 98. Then he gives credit to the ones in Surah 99. I mean, in, uh, uh, verse 99. Surah 9, verses 97, 98, he condemns them. And then in verse 99, he uh, commends and um, compliments the ones that are as good as gold. And that's how I go in on them. Same way. So Allah's already done it. I'm repeating what Allah said. Yeah, they are the most severe in disbelief and hypocrisy, the least likely to know the limits of what Allah revealed to his messenger. And they take the, the charity payment as a punishment. And then you've got a few of them that are, that are righteous. They are so the, the severest in disbelief and hypocrisy. Do they disbelieve? Well, if you corner them about the hypocrisy, they'll just go into outright disbelief. I've have seen it happen because I've been the one to try to corner them before. Tell an Arab better one to stop calling us slaves. He'll try to justify it. Tell him to turn around and insult white people, and he'll say, Audu Billah. That's the better one for you. So when I go in on better ones and you went in on African Americans accidentally, they're not the same. See, I go in on better ones intentionally, and I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I might do it before the sun goes down today. I'm going to do it every day. Not because I hate him, but because. Uh, they shouldn't have the power they have. And the other reason is because they didn't go through the oppression through which our peoples went. So this means they screwed themselves up. The Brits didn't do this to them. The French didn't do this to them. No, they just, they were this way from the beginning. When they went into North Africa after the Berbers accepted Islam and they taxed the Berbers in ways they did not tax the Arabs. Do you know what they did? Of course, the Berbers revolted. Guess what the Arabs did at that point? They called for reinforcements from Bilal Hashem to put down rebellions instead of saying, you know what? You're right to react this way. You should kick our behinds because we oppressed you. Well, see, now it's your turn to do that. You know what? Y'all are right to react this way because, well, you, you're as right as you possibly could be because you don't know, um, uh, you don't have the same training I have in terms of how to react to something like this. And I was the one that said this and screwed this up. And I didn't say anything about your enemies that, are the, that, are, that started this problem for you in the beginning. Yeah, you're perpetuating it, but you didn't start this problem. And I didn't say anything to, about the ones who did. Plus, I completely let the white folks off the hook who were 50% born out of wedlock nowadays. That would have been the right thing for you to do, sir. When I go in on your community about the Sordio, I'm not going to apologize. 
I'm only going to apologize if I say something about the sordio that's not true or if I misquote a percentage or something like that. But don't worry, I'm not going to let other communities off the hook for doing the same thing, which is making marriage difficult. I'm getting on everybody. But I'm going to get on the ones about whom I know the most. Your community happens to be one of them. I have this detail of knowledge, so I'm going to have to get on them. I'm going to be getting, I'm going to be spitting fire at the Arabs and the Pakistanis and your people. I've already started with the Pakistanis and the Arabs and the Indians. I already got on their case. The only reason I haven't said anything about your people's uh, custom of the Saudi uh, is because I promised somebody that I was going to wait. Uh, and uh, about uh, a little over half a year is left for me to, uh, yeah, a little bit over half a year is left for me to, uh, I mean, uh, a year and a half is left. And the promise that I made. Otherwise, I would have been doing this a little while ago, getting on you all. And I'm going to do it. And believe me, your young people in your community are not going to go against it. They're going to look at you all, you elders, us elders, and they're going to say, oh, yep, black horse, right? <laughs> so I'm going to have to misquote something. Now, if the Brits and the Italians had something to do with the Sordio, then, and I let them off the hook, and I find out I let them off the hook, I'd apologize, and I would say it's because I didn't know the, the role they played in. Now that I know the role they play, I'm going to go get, dig into them too, but I'm always on the case of the white Western world. Every time, every chance I get, I, get, I take digs into them, go in on them, and I tell other people around the world, don't listen to them and don't ever follow them. If there's something they pressure you to do, do the opposite. But, um, yes, yeah, I you apologize, but now you got to go back and you got to issue another one. You can't dig into the people who dug into you and reacted when you said it because you actually said it and you said it publicly and you didn't castigate the oppressor. And if somebody comes, if you do happen to hear this and someone says, yeah, but see this guy Blackheart, he digs in on the better ones all the time. You can't come after me either. Because when I dig into the better ones, I'm coming out of uh, not only personal experience, but <laughs> chapter 9 of the Quran. You want to argue with Surah Toba? I don't. Now, when you come out and you say, you know what, y'all dug into me, but I was the one that said it. I screwed this up. This is on me. I wasn't thinking about it when I did it. I don't have any malice, but it was real dumb what I did, and you should be angry. Then we would say, okay, that's an apology. At this point, though, you know how apologies are, are not, they don't spread as quickly as the original offenses. That's the unfortunate thing. And sadly enough, there are going to be African Americans and people from the Caribbean and even West Africans that are going to side with their Bantu brethren and they're going to take digs in you and your community. And now we're going to be walking around here slandering each other. And I don't want that. But that's going to be the price that we're going to have to pay not only for what you said, but for what you didn't say, and then for what you did say when you gave the apology. How could y'all come at me like this? What did they do, blame you for something you didn't say? I hope that one day what I've said will no longer be true. And until then, I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Assalamu alaikum. Black sign and black out.